Hey guys and welcome to the Ozone. Today I've got something a little bit different. I've got a little bit of a FNAF theory. Now this is the sort of thing that I used to do on my channel and uh, I kind of stopped for some reason. So I feel like I might just continue the, the series on and just make more theories as I, as I come up with them. But today I've got a major theory on Midnight Motorist. So all of these mini games that we've that we've had uh, thrown to us by Scott in these past games, um, we've been able to understand all of them. So, for example, the security puppet mini game. We know that that's Charlotte Emily, and that corresponds to the give, uh, take cakes to the children mini game or whatever that, that game is called in FNAF 2. We understand things like the Happiest Day mini game, uh, the Fruity Maze mini game. That's about one of the missing children. Uh, even the FNAF 3 minigames we understand quite a bit. But there's always been one minigame that has stood out to me and I just don't understand and I don't think anybody else does either and that is the Midnight Motorist game. And it's because we're introduced to this character who we've never really seen before because they're orange. I mean orange? Hmm. Orange. <laughs> At first, I thought it would have been Henry, because orange is like a contrast to purple, right? It's the, it's the direct opposite, so maybe, okay, purple guy is William, and so orange guy is the opposite of William, which would be Henry, right? But I don't think it's Henry anymore. We even thought it was Grandfather Afton. Um, I don't know how that theory came about. I actually... I don't remember how that theory came about. I think it's because they said something about the sun going off or something and then we thought that that sun was William Afton and he was doing bad things. So we thought, okay, this is Grandpa Afton. Um, yeah, that's, that's definitely not it. But we still don't really understand Midnight Motorist. Like, what is it trying to tell us? That's the question. And MatPat has done a good, uh, has done a good um, attempt to try and tell us what's happening with Midnight Motorist. He says that it is actually William Afton. Um, and it's because the game is actually called uh, the After That Night mini game, that was a secret, um, and it's raining, it draws a parallel to the Puppet mini game. And so later that night, uh, William Afton drives, drives home and his son has gone off to that place again or whatever. That's a good theory. Okay, how those two mini games are related. But there's still something we don't understand in that mini game. There's a lot of things we don't understand in that mini game. But one of them is just a random secret that Scott put in there. But we all know that Scott doesn't do coincidences. So you see this screen, right? Now, usually, if you're playing this for the first time, a blind run, you would go down this screen like normal, right? You'd go from the top to the bottom. However, if you are skilled, <laughs> uh, or you just know a little bit of FNAF knowledge, uh, or you've seen somebody else play it, uh, there's actually an easter egg. You can go left, you can go through this, the trees and stuff, um, and it will take you to this screen. And we're all like, well, what is this screen? What, why is this trying to tell us? And to this day we're still confused now I I kind of just left this alone I think everybody did I think everybody was like you know what Midnight Motorist we don't understand it yet we'll just think of something at some time later on but um I think I've come back to it and I think I understand what this is the reason is because 135 just came out yesterday and I've already read half of the second story and I know from that what it is I'm pretty sure anyway. So a little bit of minor spoilers in the second story um, for this, it's, it's called Room for One More, I'm doing an audiobook on it right now on YouTube. Um, and okay, so what it is, is this character who is called, um, I forgot what he's called, this character called Stanley now works in the sister location location and we know that because it's got strange green lighting and there's vents that you crawl through and it's underground. Now, the thing that I found weird about this is how you got to the sister location location because we all knew because of the maps, the weird maps in FNAF, uh, I think it was FNAF 4, no, FNAF sister location, um, 
we knew that underneath the FNAF 4 house was sister location. Okay, that's where sister location took place. We knew there was a, like an elevator, but where does that elevator conjoin to? Um, and we have finally found out. We have finally found out how you get to the sister location, and I think it's got something to do with this strange, uh, strange hump in in the middle of this forest. Before we carry on, just see this little clip from my audiobook. To get to work, he had to walk through a storage yard stacked high with lumber, concrete blocks and steel girders. Concealed in the middle of all the building materials was a stairway leading underground. A single low wattage light bulb illuminated the dark steps just enough for him to find his way down safely. At the bottom of the stairs, he had to pass the same stinking bio waste bin he passed every night. So yeah, there's a strange dump, and then you scan your ID card, and then stairs open up. Okay, and because I, I think I really do think that this strange hump in the middle of this forest is that is that place, and the reason is because who is the orange guy? William Afton. That means that the house that we see is William Afton's house. However. There's no references to the place under the house or anything, is there? But I think this little hump is the entrance to sister location. He had to hide it from, from his children, right? He couldn't have just put a doorway in his house that led to an elevator that went down. Maybe, however, one of his sons or, um, or someone has smashed through the window and escaped the house to go off to the sister the underground sister location location right maybe that I don't know about that this is just kind of a short theory just to get your mind thinking just to get the cogs turning um, but I really do think that these two things are parallels okay and this is what these books are doing this is what the Fazbeth Wright books are doing they're trying to guide us okay they're trying they're giving us more information about the past what we've got wrong what we've got right and um, trying to inform us on the actual FNAF timeline. And so I really do think that it is no coincidence that these two things match, okay? Um, I think that's enough of me talking. What do you guys think in the comments below? Um, I really do hope that you like this video. If you would like more theories in the future, then please do like, comment, and subscribe. And um, yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll see you in a s soon. I'll see you soon. Goodbye. <laughs>